Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Kerry Shawcross, and this is I Have Notes, the show where people with a surprisingly long IMDb list talk all things creative, animation, and just kind of whatever we want to talk about this week. Uh, I'm joined by my amazing co-host, uh, Issa Badiola. Hi. Whoa. It's me. Whoa. And then it's we're also joined anime. by Aaron and Jordan. <laughs> hey. hey. Classics. Hey. We're still here. We're still Y'all here. continue to be my favorite guests. <laughs> and I mean people. that. Oh, Followed by Aaron's cat. Is that <laughs> my, cat's, my cat is a new addition, yes. Hi, Pooper. Oh, I want Pooper. Hopefully her purrs won't be picked up by my mic. But maybe we can <laughs> start like an ASMR cat therapy channel. Oh, 100%. I am I so for it. F- I feel like maybe we could use something like that right now. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Shit's, um, uh, shit's going crazy. It's been a, it's, it's been a time. It's, uh, yeah, we're, uh, uh, for posterity's sake, we're recording this at the beginning of June in 2020. Uh, and, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was kind of like a, it was a crazy weekend. Oh, yeah. It's been a crazy weekend. Uh, a lot of protesting. Uh, and you know, I don't think we necessarily want to get like political on this show, but I think we all feel strongly that there are a lot of voices need to be heard. Um, so, uh, I think we can talk about this a little bit more at the end, but, uh, yeah, now is a great time to, uh, to, to prop up people whose voices should be heard. Uh, and, uh, we'll have some links at the end, but, uh, I think now would be a great time if you have the ability to donate, uh, to do that because, uh, there's a lot of people that could use help right now. Um, and even if like just we- raising awareness, you retweets, know. um, yeah. yeah. Petitions. Trying to educate people who don't see why the the things that are happening is a problem would be yeah. very helpful as well. Because there are a lot of things that are happening right now that are problems. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been a draining weekend. It's um, been a draining year. It's, it has. It really has been. Something's it happening just, every month. Yeah, we're. I I promise we're going to get positive in a minute. <laughs> or at least try to well let's but let's face just... the reality of the situation too. yeah it's, that's it's... The, that's the thing is like i i i i think we all need like those like pockets of positivity but i don't want to ignore that like yeah this shit's bad right now yeah. like yeah i i also like i want to i want to say this very very firmly too is that uh uh i'm a white dude uh if you couldn't tell if you've just <laughs> ever only listened to this podcast uh it might surprise you to find out that i'm white whoa uh, just by <laughs> this my is the voice. first time i'm learning that you're white yeah uh <laughs> so you know i uh i'm not the voice you should be listening to uh we should be listening to voices in the black community and the other you know people of color communities and people who have been oppressed and are being oppressed right now but uh i i just want to do everything i can to support them that's that's basically been this weekend is what can i retweet what can like where can i donate money um yeah i've seen a lot of interesting uh kind of on a positive note like it's it's kind of progress where it's people who have in the past acknowledged that they probably wouldn't speak up about this because it doesn't impact them and Mm -hmm. it's not really what they feel like is is their cause to talk about have kind of realize that if more people speak up about you know police brutality and injustice and the discrimination that uh people of color face that you know it really draws attention to it and makes Mm -hmm. it feel like a an actual issue and not just that community's issue like Mm -hmm. and i i've i i feel hope that you know people will keep talking about it and these people will still like prop up the voices that need to be propped up and that's something that even i have like experienced in the past where it was like i feel uncomfortable talking about an issue that doesn't affect me because i don't want to be seen you know necessarily as oh just some white dude who's coming in and you know uh trying to like either take the spotlight or, you know, like something I, but I feel like that is kind of a dumb thing to worry about right now. I mm-hmm. think worrying about everybody's, uh, well-being and everything else is more important. No, I, I, I completely agree. I, I, uh, yeah, I had just similar moment myself of just like, 
there, there, my first initial reaction was like, you know, I shouldn't, I shouldn't talk about this stuff because it doesn't relate to me, but that's exactly why yeah. I should talk about this. It, why it, why it, all of us should talk about this. That to me, that's why that's, it is important. Yeah. It's difficult to talk about. Therefore it's important. Yeah. Right. And I've had some difficult discussions with certain people yeah. this weekend. Yeah. You should definitely um, use your white privilege to help prop up those who can't it, speak. It's yeah. true. Yeah. Um, it's just, yeah, doing it in a way that isn't exploitive, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. It's I'm very tired. difficult. <laughs> yeah, it's very tiring. Tiring and heavy, heavy subject. It's a lot. I mean, I this think is... Uh... Um... Okay, please. Yeah, I don't know. I, as, as kind of the one brown person in... Um, <laughs> Uh, one brown person out of uh, probably like 15 or 20 in the entire company. Uh, yeah. I think something that I kind of take to heart as well. Oh, no, guys. Sorry. I'm emotional. No, this, is how I, right. this is how I deal with stuff. Um, this is a good time to be. <laughs> it's tough. I was just crying about this too, Maya. So um, you are not, you don't ask to be born the way you are. Um, so sometimes when identity politics kind of are the concept of your identity is kind of come into play. It's really difficult. Um, I don't necessarily want to put that um, responsibility on the Black community or the um, or Black people or people of color because that's a big emotional burden to have to educate people, which is why I think I have had a lot of conflicting feelings over the weekend because it's just been... Um, I think awareness is really important, um, but also I think ah, there's snot everywhere. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> Can you guys feel how shy I am right now? That's my favorite animal crossing <laughs> emote. I'd love you if I could. So. Um, uh, it's I think it's been difficult if for me, if only because I think um, um, I I feel so conflicted about it. I I mm -hmm. want to pro uh I intrinsically want to prop up a lot of black voices um and um uh these uh bring awareness to these causes i also am kind of conflicted uh because i feel like i just see a lot of white people on my feet <laughs> and so <laughs> yeah. i think that's where my problem is with bringing awareness sometimes is that i uh so fun fact there's there's a slack channel um and it's full of women from the company and there is a check-in like hey guys how is the poc people in this company and there's like 10 of us and everyone who responded to the thread was white and it was it was oh, so no. grating it was so annoying and i can't like it's it's so hard because i think also my response to everything is also like hey i think we should really pressure our leaders and bigger companies who actually have brands and money and the say to do something about these is also really important to me as well because they're th that's where the power is um exactly like you, you can't objectively that's where power is and mm -hmm. i think as an individual as individuals we have the um we have the we do have some responsibility to come together and to make a stand and that's where our power as individuals come is if we just kind of come together we vote we do all these things in bigger numbers but it's like this weird fallacy of one person may not necessarily have the power but the group does but then what does that mean for companies um it's it's a lot of systems that i have mm -hmm. been um having trouble with over the weekend and just kind of talking about with my so like how what is the solution to this what is the system how do you break the system um because it's like the end to bru police brutality what is the solution for that and is it is it is defunding the police that's one thing um mm -hmm. i don't know it's it's a lot of different things and it's so hard for me ever since trayvon martin to figure out what that is because there's so many different voices and there's so many different sides and there's so many different people who really care about this kind of stuff and sometimes at the end of the day i just want to lie down and play civilization six it's like really tough it's really hard <laughs> I... make your own better civilization yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
if you could just beat that game and then just like turn the, the turn the laptop around and just be like here, here it is the blue do this <laughs> I, big galaxy I'm brain this. moment i'm sorry guys i hate no, no it's totally like, this valid. is like that that like thought like uh, like loop that you like verbalized is like i feel like what everyone kind of goes through where it's just like I'm so frustrated with all this stuff going on. And then you ask, well, what is the solution? And then it just seems like a more daunting task because mm -hmm. how do you convince the people who hold the power that what's working and keeping them in power is, you know, it needs to change. Like, but I feel like part of like getting the companies and the, the leaders to acknowledge it is like the easiest step. Mm -hmm. The second part is holding them accountable mm -hmm. to actually act on what they want changed. Yeah. And I feel like we, you know, like we're in the media, we're entertainment, which really just kind of has the ability to steer pop culture. But I feel like it's still, it, it's, it's a big important mm -hmm. kind of section of society. Mm -hmm. But I feel like, if people would just at the top acknowledge that they need to change something mm -hmm. and they're going to at least try, like that would make everyone feel a little bit better. And then if we just like hold their feet to the fire and just say like, you know, what are you doing? Like, mm -hmm. how are you changing it? Like, right. I think that's how the ball gets rolling. But yeah, I, I also just feel overwhelmed with, how sometimes it feels impossible yeah and yeah i mean isa to 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 your point this is something that i i saw somebody somebody tweet out and it kind of it hit me and it's something that like i'm trying to do better as well is it, it it needs to be on all of us and i think in my opinion it also needs to be on white people specifically <laughs> to educate ourselves and not just turn to our 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 you know our friends and Other say, white what, friends. what do you want us to do? <laughs> yeah. You know, like, it's not, it's not, it's, you know, it, it's not fair for me to, to look to you East and say, well, what should I do right now? You know, because mm -hmm. that's not your responsibility. You've got enough going on. You know, I want you to just put, play Civ six. If you, want to say, <laughs> you know, Thanks, so Thanks. I, I think, I think it's, it's on, it's on everybody right now to educate themselves across the board. Yeah. Self-examination is also a big part yeah. of that. Hmm. Yeah. And, and realizing, you know, what white privilege is. Mm -hmm. And even if you've had a hard life and you've done the uh, prototypical, worked harder than everyone else and went from poverty and a hard life and you were white, your experience is not going to be the same mm -hmm. as a black person or mm -hmm. a Latino person or any other person of color or minority so in some ways it's even harder for those people to realize that we're in a broken system i uh uh if this is if if i'm, I'm always a fan of like let's try and find like like humor here and there uh and we can totally cut this out if this is not a good thing but uh, <laughs> my, oh boy no, no i i my, my friend sent me a a gif or it was like a a video that was like white people thinking they can solve uh oh, no. all of this oh. by tagging people on instagram oh, and it was oh, the no. video of somebody like mopping water from the ocean and putting it in the mop bucket <laughs> yep yeah and it's just like we did it guys racism oh, and we yeah out. exactly <laughs> It's basically like Green Book, where it's yeah. just like, and then racism was solved, yeah. thanks yeah. to me, the white person. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. I, I felt is... so betrayed when my sister told me that she and her friends thought that, like, Green Book was really good. And I was like, oh, oh no. <laughs> maybe I'm sure it is, but also, ooh. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of uh, millionaires, billionaires recently that have been like, yeah, I'm going to tag five of my friends on instagram and that's that's it i'm done like i just wish the fucking billionaires and the one trillionaire <laughs> like just did anything instead of like you know just watching and being like oh ouch my heart like 
There is something that Mariel um, had said and shared, and I think it Mariel. rings true. Oh, Mariel's Mariel, been kicking ass. Yeah, can we just give her a hand real quick? Yeah. Because she's been amazing. I, I hope, I, I'm pretty sure every show and podcast has, but yeah, I, I <laughs> she's been incredible. Sorry, Issa, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just, yeah. I, you said her name. And, <laughs> and just suddenly like just wave a of, like, <laughs> of happiness washed over me. And I just had it like, oh, Mariel. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's, she's great. I'm also sure she's really exhausted. I feel for her. Um, <sighs> yeah. Because uh, one of the things she had said too, though, was uh, that I think rings true and it's something I've been thinking about for a long time. Um, and thinking about what I could do. Because to me, I'm also of the belief that I, I do think money talks. Mm -hmm. um, but I think she also mentioned too, is like people who kind of spring up just because of this one thing that happens and then they kind of like disappear. You know, it's oh, yeah. it, it has to be a constant battle. And that's why I'm pretty weary because like I said, Trayvon Martin, you know, started mm -hmm. un unwittingly his death started Black Lives Matter. Um, he was just the tip of the iceberg. George Floyd, yeah. he's another it's tip been, of the iceberg. It's it's been six years. You it's know? been so mm -hmm. long, and I, I, it's exhausting. And I think this has to be something that I think people need to be aware. Of. It's not just something that you say support of once. You do have to continue doing that, yeah. and mm -hmm. that's part of being a movement. Is always like, or I guess, yeah, movement. Um, yep. It's constantly believing in it and also fighting for it i think too though there's a man i i guess it's also like uh, i don't know it's it's a lot of thinking about the group versus thinking about the individual or thinking mm -hmm. about yourself mm -hmm. in this way it's like take care of yourself too in these instances or these cases um <laughs> look i cried <laughs> <laughs> this sucks <laughs> i'm so bad uh, well, i feel like a, a lot okay, of Lisa. like a lot of the issues come up from the fact that like there aren't really there there are communities but the police are not always representative of those communities mm -hmm. and they don't necessarily care for the people they police mm -hmm. and like i don't know i like that's one that's one that's one thing that we could probably change right off the bat you know yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. get people right. from places to police those places yeah, I mean, I think the 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 thing we've been talking about, and and I think it's just going to remain true, is that like none of this is easy, and none of it's going to happen overnight. And I think that's something that we all need to remember and be thoughtful of. Um, you know, it, this can't just be this last weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has to be yeah, a continuous to... effort, even beyond the protest. Yeah. Uh, in the future, like we just have to continue on, really. Yeah. To Issa's point, like just getting involved and staying involved, like the more people that can do that is what it, is what it's mm -hmm. going to take. To make it semi animation related uh, and also keeping accountability, I guess. Um, I've seen a lot of like Twitter people discuss this where a lot of people are trying to like amplify uh, black creators, black artists, uh, so on and so forth. A lot of them are saying like, hey, feel free to reach out to me if you need a job in the animation industry or entertainment industry. Um, and to continue off of that, a lot of others, um, especially people of color, have been saying, hey, this is great energy, but we have to continue doing this even once these protests are done. Mm. So yeah, yeah, we definitely need to like diversify the that's, entertainment industry as a whole. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's actually an interesting stat too, is that, um, I think you'll notice in a lot of art schools and art colleges, there's uh, the amount of women to men in animation programs tend to be like more than half women to men to like, mm -hmm. it's like 60, 40, right? It's usually more women than men, but then you kind of look at the industry and you wonder why are the stats not reflecting what's yeah. happening in the education system? And it's about mm -hmm. retention. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of, young women and young people of color and young black people who are not um, getting the same opportunities and are not being as seen as their peers. And I think that's something really important to consider as well is just making sure you're constantly, um, you're constantly lifting up uh, the people who don't have that um, platform mm -hmm. either. Yeah. And I think, I think, you know, our industry is great for that too because i think it would be good to get more voices telling stories and more mm -hmm. people more voices in front of cameras um 
Yeah, I don't want to see another like Moana on. movie written by two old white guys. <laughs> yeah. You don't. You don't want that. I just want to clarify. You don't. You don't. <laughs> I'm all for like the the surface level effort of that movie, but if we yeah. can get other people involved, great. Well, it's because white people have nothing to write about themselves. It's just like because <laughs> it's so bland. This is my story well, the, about Mayo. It's oh. like it's like a, um, <laughs> creative colonialism, oh. where like now they're branching oh. off into other. <laughs> other societies oh. and, like taking that over oh my yeah. god yo i love a good white joke <laughs> yeah, me, me too they like i've always been a big fan of like i i wish people would make fun of white people more like it's one of my like anytime like uh, uh, i'm on the internet like on twitter or reddit or tiktok or whatever and i see like white people jokes it's like my favorite fucking thing. <laughs> sometimes we suck y'all yeah. and I don't know. Sometimes, uh, a lot of times we suck, y'all. <laughs> y'all. Uh, so I. I oh, go ahead, please. I like I like you know like acknowledging that like it it's a joke and also there's truth behind it because of like the institutionalized power of white mm. people uh, and the systemic racism that society has over people of color, and as long as you can acknowledge that it's not white racism <laughs> reverse racism is real great. i'm telling you if i that hear one more person tell me that the word boomer or karen is a slur oh my god like Jordan. if you need to understand people not understanding white privilege yeah. it's you just point at that you, you do this we have to we have to beat that out now we have to beep out what you said they're not going to know what you said because it's too offensive for us to put on the show oh I, I'm not. So I'm not even saying that like those are good terms either, but they're certainly not in any way the severity of other terms. <laughs> also yeah. true. Also true. Like, no, absolutely not. <laughs> um, I guess to kind of to kind of segue to like the kind of stuff we would normally talk about, I guess, or like the creative my, process. My cat's going crazy, you guys. <laughs> Your That's cat's fed up with this too. That's the creative <laughs> process right out. there, actually. Yeah. But the creative process is sometimes I kick my cat out of my office. <laughs> <laughs> Not um, literally. Not literally. Hey, I, I think it might be interesting to talk about uh, trying to be creative when the world's on fucking fire. Oh, no. Uh, and how hard that is. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but I mean, like, today was not Today was a good un creative yeah, day. Yeah. It was pretty unproductive. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I don't have an answer. I'm hoping one of you do. Oh, God, no. No. Oh, okay, well, cool. All right. End of it's... discussion. I mean, <laughs> I mean Mondays even, are even when... My busiest days. Even... Yeah. In terms of meetings, Even when so. it's your job, it's like... You can't... It'd be like, it'd be like trying to go to work, like, during like something big in the news happening like you know like 9-11 or something like right how would you be expected to like uh yeah let me just get the to you and then you're just like looking over at the tv like making sure that everything's okay like and it's not okay that's yeah, also yeah, yeah you can't <laughs> you, you look can't at the tv focus. and it's like it's not okay uh-oh yeah <laughs> Uh, I can't speak for any of the other departments, but I know for art anyways, I think our producers and our leads are very understanding of these weird times. And they're, uh, it's been, we've been trying to make it clear to like our team that's like, hey, things are fucked up right now. It's okay if you're feeling real crummy and whatnot, like yeah. it's totally valid. So yeah, if, if the uh, pandemic wasn't, yeah, if that wasn't, wasn't enough. making you feel cr crummy <laughs> enough, yeah. well, we can just put this on top of it. <sighs> I'm yeah. tired, you guys. Yeah, I'm. It's, I'm tired it's too. Been hard. It's been yeah. hard. Yeah, Th that that thought crossed my mind when I looked over at our uh, topic sheet uh, after we were talking about, or like in the middle of us talking about all that heavy stuff, and I was like, the first thing on our topic sheet is like, <laughs> the Hedgehog sequel, <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm I forgot not ready about to talk about the, the pandemic Sonic, the Hedgehog and after, sequel. It's right only now. Sonic. Sonic it's has always... bookended the apocalypse. Oh my god. <laughs> 
Is Sonic one of the four horsemen? <laughs> Oh, all the, four of them. the all original four of them. design of Sonic is one of the four horses. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably like famine or something. It's <laughs> all like yeah, gangly. He doesn't have he, he doesn't have good teeth. Exactly. <laughs> He's got skinny little human. limbs, he got bad teeth. Now, looking looking guess, kind of before, skeletal and creepy. Oh my god. Before the movie came out, I was I did not think this movie was going to get a sequel, but once it came out, it, it seemed kind of a no brainer to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of surprised people are surprised. Well, I haven't seen it, so I don't know, uh -oh. but I do know the reaction to it has been mostly not negative. Hey. <laughs> That's pretty good. Do, do, That's telling. Do you know the thing that happens at the end that makes it pretty clear that there's going to be a sequel or uh, at least planned? There's something that happens the, at the end? Does the, I think the original design of sonic pops up <laughs> no and he's like no well the uh the original design you have to help me i'm in an <laughs> alternate universe come with me and then he sucks him into that universe and then sonic looks at the camera and goes well uh, you guys have got to figure this out <laughs> it's you're really close it's actually the original sonic design uh is the sleep paralysis demon for the new sonic design <laughs> It's just in T-pose, and it's just like... Yeah, oh God. Yeah. He's, like he's in T-pose, but he's like getting scaled up, so he's like getting close oh, to the camera. Have y'all ever seen uh, uh, Shrek is Love, Shrek is Life? Yes! <laughs> it's that, but not. for Sonic. Uh, boy, I haven't thought about that in years. Um, yeah, I think you're uh, the one who showed me that, Gary. <laughs> oh, was, oh, I don't want to be the one that showed that to you. That was a, diff that was a different oh, me, God. Jordan. <laughs> Uh, uh, well, I guess I'm gonna, if y'all are cool with I'm gonna spoil the last bit of Sonic, uh, if you wanna Ooh, ignore this for the next spoiler. 10 seconds. Right. Why don't we just, Sonic yeah, Cinematic Universe. A spoiler warning. Right there. <laughs> spoiler. Uh, the, uh, the movie ends, everybody's happy, uh, and then Tails shows up. Oh! Dun, dun, dun. I would have never why, guessed. Uh, why is that have, Did none of y'all see the Sonic movie? I, I didn't, know. Okay. Wait, you did? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Did you you didn't see the beautiful tales moment? I did. That was, it was beautiful. I was, I, I was acting. Oh, okay. But, okay. but like, why <laughs> is that a big deal? Busy. It's tails. But tails is tails. Okay. But he's not like shadow or something. It's just like, oh, oh hey, my friend's here now. You. Cool. Hey, friend. <laughs> why excuse that, you. Why do we need a sequel now? Oh my gosh. I, I want to tell have... I want to tell y'all a story. I I saw that movie with a group of friends, and we that moment came up. And this, the person sitting next to you was a huge Sonic fan. Mm. And that moment came up and I looked over her and she was just crying <laughs> because she was so happy that Tails is there. That's can, I, can I take this moment to say, I don't understand Sonic fans. Oh my God, Jordan. <laughs> I, I feel like Sonic fans are, if you weren't there at the beginning, you're not going to understand it. Yeah. Yeah. Sonic. I don't, I don't think any, any Sonic, like, any Sonic fan's first game was like the Sega Dreamcast one. No. That was my first I... Sonic game. Are you a Big hardcore Sonic, Sonic fan? Well, I'm not hardcore, but I like it. <laughs> I feel like, and you all know that we've been very clear that we are supportive of furries. <laughs> I feel like Sonic fans are like light furries. Furry that they don't want to commit to being furries. But if the situation was right <laughs> and the costume was right, then maybe. Specifically, the costume is like Amy or Big the Cat. Isn't like, the cat. Li like one of their names is literally Cream. It is. She's the bunny. Yeah. What do you expect me to do when I hear Cream? Like. Go to therapy. Upset. He, he's like that. <laughs> I'm so bad. I thought her video froze, but instead it was just. Like, <laughs> it was Angie. Don't talk to me. I'm angry. <laughs> yeah, I'm introducing my uh my Sonic OC. Uh his his name is Nut. <laughs> uh, no, it has to be Nut the and then whatever animal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nut. Nut the orgasm. <laughs> no, uh, no, that would be bad. Uh, <laughs> nut Nut the sexy squirrel. And he's like, <laughs> and they don't need like, a descriptor, Carrie. <laughs> no, 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 no. He, no, 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 no. They don't need an adjective. <laughs> he's a sexy rabbit. You know, uh, Lola Bunny. 
Oh, it's Ross. the dude oh version. Oh, so oh my god! Oh <laughs> yeah. my god! Stop! He's just... got like low cut shorts and like he's you can got see like the that, V. Those... Yep. <laughs> oh, so, so bad. Oh yeah. Hey, I'm nut. Yeah. Stop. Hey, it's nice to meet you. I'm nut. <laughs> What was that one uh, Sonic OC that was like super edge lord? Oh, and I know like, he's, he's in the pose. I forget the character's name, but he's like nothing personnel. Yeah, that's kid. what it is. I, I think that's just his name at this point. Nothing personnel, yeah. that chunk. <laughs> My favorite uh, pastime man. is to Google your name and the hedgehog, the hedgehog and seeing what you get. It's oh my god, so good. Hours of fun with your friends. <laughs> I uh and this is uh this is the official obviously this is the official I have no stands on this. Um we are pro furry. Um and I think we've made that clear from day one. Uh but we are anti Sonic fan. That's right. <laughs> no! Hey, you know Sonic fans love for us. <laughs> What are, what are they gonna do? Throw cheese dogs at us or whatever? <laughs> cheese, cheese dogs. dogs. I'm just gonna... hot dogs with cheese on them. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. A block of cheese. I was, I was gonna be like Carrie. I know, I, I know the person who like made the um. There's this big Sonic um fan project called Not So Unleashed and or Whoa. Not So Unleashed or Not So Unleashed. Not Man, so. it sucks because yeah. <laughs> <Aaron, say> no. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks because like I've known this guy ever since I worked at Titmouse and we're really good friends and um and uh I just know him as one of the bigger Sonic fans I've ever met in my life. And I was really? and, like, I'm gonna send him this clip about how you're anti-Sonic fan. No! And be like, look, Aaron, look at this. <laughs> I okay, uh bra- oh, oh, what was that? Okay, breaking update. Uh we are no longer anti-Sonic fans. <laughs> We are pro Sonic pro fan Sonic. here because I just thought about the fact that probably, and I am pulling this out of my ass, but I'm pretty sure I'm 95% that this is accurate. I think at least a third of the people in our industry right now started out doing Sonic OC. That's a statistic that I would, uh, I would die for. You know what? Ooh, I have a really good question. <gasps> mm-hmm. What was everyone's first oc <laughs> oh man oh if you ever made one for an mine was a show. powerpuff girl oh, i don't dear. remember her name but her color scheme was yellow and that's that's really it she was the that's uh, my earliest memory yes you know, i know you'd like be sugar. very happy i know i remember the the intro for powerpuff girls it sugar, was sugar spice, everything. spice yes. everything nice and piss <laughs> That's what it was. I remember. I remember that version. Yep, that's it. Yeah, is that it? Jesus is looking at you, Gary. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hiding from her. Uh, I think my first. Uh, I was one of those weird kids that like I used to just like draw eyeballs on everything. Oh my! Uh, I still do that. What are you talking I about? I used to. I used to make like jets that were made out of like eyeballs and okay, stuff. Okay, that's a little weird. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm weird. Uh, I think my like first what are they, like, making was... them Zelda bosses. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, I think my first like OC like character was for Captain Underpants. Hey. Oh, that's yeah. a good okay. choice. That's cute. Yeah, man, I had a lot of like I would take um, properties. Like I, I had like it was mostly AU stuff that I did. Whoa. So it would be like mm. Pokemon characters, and I would like make like my own like comic or story like based on mm. Pokemon characters. Oh. Um, some Dragon Ball Z, but I think OC wise, it was probably Legend of Zelda. Nice. Oh, oh that's cool. Yeah. Wow. Did, what did you make like Linkle? Like what was it? <laughs> no, it wasn't as good as Linkle. It was Linkle. Okay. Well, um, Jordan, I, 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 I know. <laughs> it was basically a self insert. Oh, oh me into the, the best world. kind of OC. Yeah, <laughs> I used. To... I was a kid. I was. It wasn't original. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I'm not talented at all. I can't draw or anything like that. So I. What are you talking about? You drew eyeballs with jets. An eyeball. I jet. would have never done that. I so... well, that, for good reason. That's why you're an art director. Um, 
It's because you would you would stop yourself in the middle. You'd slap your own hand. Yeah, <laughs> you'd get the idea and be like, "That's dumb. I'm not yeah. doing that." I'm reaching for instead, my tablet. You're my pen. second. <laughs> instead, you're my second grade teacher trying to decide if they should call my parents or not. Okay. Um, <laughs> He's drawing but, uh, eyeballs again. <laughs> I used to. I played with Legos so much, oh. and I used to just like have like little like I would just like have like. I was very inspired by Dragon Ball Z, but I used to have like mm-hmm. multi, multi day sagas of like they've crash landed. What are Both. they gonna do now? Yeah. Um, that was that was my thing. I was that kid. That was cute. That's adorable. Yeah, I do that. I did that with Barbies. <laughs> what about you? Um, it was Digimon. Hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, was it? Was it? Were you like a? I can't remember what they're called. A, a Digimoner, or were you a Digimon? The, the Digi Justin? Yeah. The, the, the what? I'm sorry. The, the, the what? A Digi Mana Knight? It's time to do it a duel. I was definitely a Digi Justin. Uh, I nice. kept drawing my character with like those long kimono sleeves, but I'd be oh. terrible at it. Um, at drawing in general. <laughs> it's a journey. Hey, it Start somewhere. Yeah. yeah. It's a journey, everyone. <laughs> yeah. That's why, that's why I. Uh... I mean, I should say we, because we're all united. Uh, that's why we reversed our stance on how we feel about Sonic fans. <laughs> because I thought about how many people genuinely that probably got started in like a creative mindset. And I love that. So ignore what Jordan said. Sonic <laughs> fans are great. All I said is I don't understand them. And that doesn't so mean don't that I don't them. appreciate and empathize happy. with them. Okay, yeah. well, let, let me ask this. That Jordan, Just because I don't understand their struggle doesn't mean I can't prop up their voices. <laughs> what? <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, it's just like, he's that out. great. <laughs> Yeah, it's like I love knowing that we're gonna cut something out. You know, like it's like a good feel. <laughs> <laughs> no, Sam, keep it in. <laughs> um, what else do we want to talk about this week? I'm just trying to segue away from talking about Sonic now at this point. Okay. Oh, uh, what about some uh, other wholesome content we've been watching during these trying times? Oh I, yeah, Aaron, you have something. Yeah. Yes. Do it. I do. Finally, it's my turn to speak. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't know if y'all saw, but there was a little uh, tweet that went viral fairly recently for an opening for a Chinese anime called Ooh. All Saints Street, and it is sickeningly Ooh. adorable, Ooh. and Whoa. it is very wholesome. Uh, they are, I guess all of the episodes are on YouTube. They're about like four minutes each, four minutes, 30 seconds around there. Mm, that's so digestible. you can literally watch it in an hour. There's 12 episodes. Oh. Uh, and it's just about this adorable little demon lord, as they call him, uh, the little sheep sheep boy down there. Uh, and he sheep. goes to the world of humans because he's like a weeb for humans. It's like, <laughs> I want to live with him. They're cool. A weeb for humans. Weeb, this big, yeah. yeah. So I watched the first episode and it <gasps> starts with him literally like on the plane. There you go. Yeah, like, he's like going on such the- a big, uh, for lack of a better word, a big human stand. Yeah. He <laughs> I'm going to go humans. check out. <laughs> Clearly, he takes a not plane from culture. hell somehow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Clearly, Wait. he did not. He's not seen twenty twenty because there's no reason uh-huh. to be a human stand <laughs> right, now. right now. So that um, that key art we posted is the animation. Does the animation look exactly like that? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, that's the art style. Yeah, it's, it's, oh, that's they so do cute. some interesting things too. It's yeah, like it's really they well do some done. two and a half D stuff in like the intro. <gasps> mm-hmm. Ooh, it's okay. interesting. Yeah, uh, the I don't intro know what slaps. My cat's doing right now. Oh no! Oh, she wants to watch All Saints Street. All Saints Street. <laughs> they should sponsor us. I'm gonna us. go throw her out real quick. Okay. Okay. But tell anyways, me, tell me what's interesting, Erin. Oh, I mean, I don't think it's like a new concept by any means. Mm-hmm. Again, it's just uh, a bunch of demons, monsters living together in one house as roommates, and you just kind of see their lives day to day, see how they interact with each other, uh, how they interact with humans, and uh, you just see their wacky antics. Um, but yeah, it's just really charming and refreshing. It's it genuinely, genuinely, genuinely goodness, uh, makes me smile and laugh every time I watch it. Oh, yay. Okay. It's is really it, good. Is there, is there an English dub? Is it in Chinese? It's uh, English subtitles. Okay, cool. Yeah, nice. Uh, yeah, so it's... Uh, I highly recommend. Also, the Ch- opening song was um, done by like Chinese Vocaloids, which is pretty dope. Oh, whoa. Yeah. 
So I, I, I was going to ask, like, just out of curiosity, because I, yes. I, I've only seen the, the image we saw, like, do, you know, uh, anim, anime, yeah. quote unquote, anime coming out of China is not like a, a super common thing. It's not like doesn't happen, but it's not like the most common thing ever. Like, mm -hmm. do you do you feel like they're trying to stick to like traditional like anime style or do mm -hmm. you, are they kind of doing their own thing? I think it's very reminiscent of what Westerners would consider anime right. style. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I do think there is like a pretty decent uh, Chinese anime industry. Uh, I just yeah. think it rarely makes its way over to like a Western audience. Mm -hmm. um, like mm -hmm. the only reason I ever heard of this was because the opening was going viral on mm. Twitter. Mm. It's I a very good it. opening. Yeah. It's very well it animated. It slaps. So what you're saying is there's more there's more Chinese shows to watch that, yeah, that I, I'm not aware Ooh, of. It. I need I to I need have, to learn. Ooh, uh, I have thing. a rec. Um, uh, my best friend Ellen, uh, she's Chinese, and she actually got me in, or she has brought to my awareness some shows that um, she's been <gasps> watching, and some movies. So actually, one there's a Chinese 3D animated movie on Netflix out right now, right now called Nezha. Um, oh, okay, I've seen this one. Yes. Or I haven't seen it, but I'm aware of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Chinese 3D movie, it's kind of like, uh, it, it's based off of, I think, a legend um, that they had of old folklore. I have not watched it, but now that I know it's on that platform, my friend Ellen really loves that movie, and she highly recommended it to me. And another movie and or show that she kind of tried to get us as friends to like watch in our friend group is called The Legend of Hay. Um, and it actually starts one? off, yeah, yeah, it's like the black cat oh, one. I don't um, want to watch it. It actually uh, starts off like uh, the Saint Street uh anime where it's shorts um oh. but it expands into a series and it you think it's about a cat but it's actually about a uh, mystical supernatural being Whoa. so oh. um it's a really i think a really fascinating like look at like something that starts off small kind of like red versus blue and then the lore <laughs> keeps building and that's Is that that's the kind of stuff i really like when you say it starts out like shorts does does it like go from four minutes to like 11 minutes like... i think it's consistently four minutes or like okay. it's pretty short all the but there's a lot of episodes out like it's okay. seasons now and i'm pretty i was i'm pretty excited I, I, isa i have i have a question he says the legend of hay h-e-i yes h-e-i okay thank you that's cleared <laughs> it up for me <laughs> hmm. i knew i just i just I... didn't know i like genuinely I, like i didn't know how to spell it to search for it, it was a he was either going to make a, a hay is for horses joke or a legend of hay. No joke. I was going to say, is this a hay related thing? Is this a greeting related thing? And it turns out it's neither. And that's that's great. Ooh, there was no Perry joke. And Jordan, you should watch it. If only because the feature, uh, the main character is like a black hat. And I think you guys would love the character of <laughs> Also, by the way, the me raising my hand, this is a holdover. We've been doing, we have a lot of writing meetings right now. We're all, you know, uh, you know, Miles, myself, uh, Kiersey, and Eddie are, we're all on a call together. And this has been our, uh, just like to talk about creative process stuff. This is our go-to of somebody's talking. We don't want to interrupt them, but we want to say something. So like we wait, we, we genuinely just raise our hand and wait so that people know, like we want to talk next. My turn, my turn. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good that's way valid. to do it. Yeah. You kind of just like put your hand up. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's so funny. Cause like somebody will be talking and you just see somebody go, Oh, <laughs> and like they're just like they'll be like this for like 30 seconds because they like something somebody said makes them want to say something but they're like yeah. i like, wonder res respect i wonder how like people or, or kids right now who are like going through school in a like digital uh mm. teleconferencing setting are going to change certain mannerisms about like raising their hand or something Whoa. you know mm. like will people just start doing this <laughs> 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 or, or like, do you, do you think question. when kids go back to school, they'll just like put their phone on their desk with Netflix yeah. up and be like, "What? What's the problem? I don't know." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it's like how there's like the the slight culture gap between like uh, people who grew up with like corded phones and they like do the the pantomime like this yep. versus kids who only use cell phones and they do this. Oh, that messes with their phone. This yes. doesn't even what. I don't. But touch it's the shape like of the phone. I, I, I don't, don't talk to you. Do, you don't hold, hold a, you don't hold a corner phone, phone like this. this. It's the shape of the phone, yeah. Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie's <laughs> Carrie's tired. That makes sense. I okay, I guess. Shove my phone into my headphones. I, I have done that before. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> oh my god, Aaron. 
Hello. That's what you do while you're driving. My fellow humans, I have evolved. <laughs> <what you> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I uh just talking about like stuff we've been watching too. Uh this is not an ad. I was not asked to do this. Uh but I do have HBO Max now. Uh thank you corporate overlords. And uh <laughs> I have been rewatching a bunch of Geely movies and Ooh. uh we do. Which ones have you watched? Uh the just this weekend uh Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind nice. and uh Whisper of the Heart. <gasps> Okay. Yes, and I'm gonna watch Cat Returns tonight, which I'd never seen. A Whisper of the Heart or Cat Returns, uh, non animation. They got the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> it, I love that show. <laughs> I'm not I just, surprised. I grew up with it. I'm sorry. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you if you. Like I own a lot of Ghibli films on on Blu-ray, but it is just infinitely easier to be able to stream stuff. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Having this is the first time it's ever been just like, oh, here's every Ghibli movie in front of me. What do I want to watch? It's, you can it's, finally like just it's pretty nice. Get get all the ones you haven't seen, and Oof. yeah, there are a lot that I haven't seen. I've Same. probably just seen Spirited Away a hundred <laughs> times, but oh, my favorite. Um, if uh, if you I haven't hadn't... seen Nausicaa, please watch it. <laughs> it's probably, my favorite. Yeah, like I'll, I might do that one next. This weekend we favorite. watched uh, Howl's Moving Castle. Nice, which was pretty good. It was a little long. Um, mm. I did like um, the early adoption of some of the three D elements and stuff, mm-hmm. like uh, with with the castle and stuff. And also, Billy Crystal is actually really good <laughs> in the movie. As, <laughs> yeah, as Calcifer, like Christian Bale was like whatever. Uh, I feel like some actors aren't cut out for voice acting and i feel like christian bale might be one of those people and like he didn't really bring a lot to the role in my opinion but billy crystal was great he was my favorite character can i say and i think i've said this before on fan service i i am not i'm not big into the subs versus dubs debate i just uh-huh. just watch whatever you want mm. just watch whatever you want it's fine yeah sometimes i don't want to have to like read and think or i want to focus right. on the visuals it's fine in my opinion do what you want uh, please watch the Japanese dub of Kiki's Delivery Service. <laughs> oh, I've never seen the Japanese I have, dub. I have absolutely no problem with Phil Hartman. I like his work and other things. I don't think the cat should have been Phil Hartman. <laughs> uh, it's just my opinion. But I, I would implore you to maybe watch the Japanese dub of Kiki's Delivery Service if you're going to watch Kiki's Delivery Service. Or, or <laughs> Is- watch the English and tell me why I'm wrong, but in the in the, in the Japanese version, it's this very like kind of typical cute like cat like you know young yeah yeah a little bit more feminine sounding cat. <laughs> it is a male cat, but it's you know it's it's yeah. a it's a, it's a okay, lighter okay, voice. Hey, hey, no, it's literally like, hey Kiki, <laughs> maybe we should go over here. And it's like there's nothing wrong with what you're doing, Phil Hartman. Uh, I believe rest in peace. Uh, I have enjoyed oh. you on news radio and other things. <laughs> oh my god. If I'm thinking of the right person. <laughs> Uh, but look, no, I nobody fact check him. No, no one fact check me. <laughs> okay, well... Now I'm just Googling Phil Hartman a lot. Phil Hartman. <laughs> I totally get that. And like a lot of it is like a nostalgia factor too, where it's yeah. like what you grew up with is your preferred thing. I, uh, um, if, if I may, uh, he has passed away. Uh, his performance was great. I just don't think it was right for the part, uh, but that is my personal Jeez. opinion. Jordan, please go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, there is there a version where it's uh, the English dub, but anytime Gigi speaks, it's the Japanese. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it, lives, it lives in my premiere uh, in an hour when I make it. Uh, That's true, yeah. Get, yeah. That should be so pretty funny. easy to do, right? <laughs> it would make sense, too, because it's like an animal talking, so then it's a different language and it's subtitled. Oh, my God. Sense. Oh my god. Aaron, uh, the Gigi I, cut. I know Kiki's like our one of our favorites. Like we grew up on Kiki, right, Aaron? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, did yeah. you see the um the dub before uh John Lasseter and Disney actually took it and it was another company that had dubbed Kiki? Did you see that version? Oh. When what year what year did they do the redub? Oh. The great redubbing? The great yeah, re- great. Yeah. I forget, because that was two thousand something. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, just, I might have seen sure. the original then. Okay. To make sure I understand dubs. correctly, uh, basically every movie had 
or up to the point of the of Disney acquiring them had been dubbed already. And then mm. Disney went back through and redubbed every movie, correct? Yeah, in like the early 2000s, I want to say like 2004. So the thing with Kiki's, Cause... I I don't, they, I think they redubbed a couple, but for the most part, they kept some of the original dubs, but there were decisions ah. to edit down. Yeah, I think what the original dubs say. I feel like Gigi's oh. voice stayed the same. Yeah. Because I remember 100. all the times I've seen it, even before the redub, it's still, hi, hey, Kiki. <laughs> I yeah i just i i i'm never that way i'm never i don't care what you watch just not maybe this time though I, oh, i'm that... actually curious like i, I want to watch the um japanese the original dub of howl's moving castle and see if howl isn't a boring piece of shit <laughs> oh my god um, i probably should who cares if you're boring, god, if you're that's beautiful. one for the negativity jar i'm sorry <laughs> Well, Ooh, let's I, make this a positive. Okay, you see, go ahead. You see, go ahead. Uh, I talked about Howl's Moving Castle with uh, Austin Hardwick because I do not actually like Howl's Moving Castle that much, and um, the love story is contrived. <laughs> Jordan also, <laughs> now that he knows he has a supporter here, <laughs> Jordan wants to talk. He has but, too um, much power. I I don't like Howl's Moving Castle as much, and um, I talked about it with Austin Hardwick once because I was like, yeah, I just realized I'm not really into this movie, and he's like what and i go yeah i i don't think howl is actually very good and austin yeah. hardwick like thought about it and he went oh you know what i just realized the the amount that you like howl's moving castle is probably proportionate proportional to how much you want to bone howl mm, that's why i loved it <laughs> <laughs> That makes sense. Is that why? Is that why Austin liked it? <laughs> I I looked at it. I was like, "So you like how we've cast?" And it goes, "Yeah." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "Yeah, that's what I was trying to say." And he then said. he had an awakening. And he was well, like, "I I'm gonna think about that." <laughs> I was like, "Okay, Austin Hardwick." <laughs> well, I definitely didn't want to bone Hal because I find I found him very unlikable. Yes, oh, gotcha. I wanted to bone Calcifer. Oh, oh no! Yeah. For the record, <laughs> he was hot. <laughs> I'd love for him Too to light hot. my fire. <laughs> related um so I, I talked briefly about this to isa uh i've discovered another ghibli film that i'd never heard of until fairly recently called ocean waves ah. and i haven't actually seen it i've only seen a video essay about it on youtube so i'm gonna try not to base my opinions too much off of that but it sounded like it's a little bit different from what they normally do like i think um if I remember correctly, they allowed the animators to have a little bit more freedom with this project. Mm. Um, and it's definitely more like slice of lifey, uh, a character study or character piece. Um, but it sounds like, uh, depending on how you look at it, it could be seen as like Ghibli's unintentionally like queer film, mm. which is kind of interesting. Mm. Um, I'll try to post the, the link to the video essay. Uh, apparently the movie, according to the uh, editor, the the movie isn't that exciting. It's probably not that good. But uh, as like a, a queer person myself, I found the idea of Ghibli even like unintentionally going this route with one of their movies to be interesting. So yeah, yeah that's typically that sounds... a, a topic they've kind of stayed away from. So. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, it... I was surprised by the existence of this movie. Uh, maybe someday I'll watch it. But yeah. Yeah, it is interesting. It's probably not on HBO Max because mm. I've never heard of it. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I saw I have, it on there. I've, I've <laughs> never heard of that one. Well, yeah, I'm gonna blow your minds later. <laughs> you know, drop Maybe that we link. We can watch it and see. Oh. Um, I'll say, like, I watch Ghibli movies for the most part for like artistically, like, what are they doing animation wise, and mm -hmm. like just appreciating the art form that mm -hmm. they like master. Um, like usually the story is pretty slice of life or it's a little too uh fantastical you know it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be good for me to enjoy it mm, and while i have the problems with Howl's moving castle and, and its actual story there's a lot of really cool visual stuff in there mm. i love like there's one shot they keep like showing um in sophie's hometown just the shot of the train that like the pedestrians are walking around the train goes under this bridge and stuff and then later there's um during the climax there's a big 
uh, battle and stuff going on. And they have just that same shot and it's only for a second. And like, it's just like covered in fire and like stuff is exploding. Oh, and yeah. you're just like, you feel it a little bit more closer because of what's been established with that shot. So mm -hmm. I find, I find moments like that, like, mm -hmm. you know, the, the real, uh, the real proof in the pudding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I, same, same boat of like, you know, I don't think they're not perfect in any way. Nothing is, uh, but the, the, the except pacing, for Sonic. except for Sonic, <laughs> of course, uh, okay. the, the pacing is just incredible. And like, the, to me, like how much they know when to take time and when not to. Mm -hmm. um i also yeah. just like you know sometimes it can be a little heavy-handed and i don't always agree with everything in it but like yeah the fact that they they uh typically tend to, to try and take a, a political stance on things um i thought was really nice i mean like mm -hmm. yeah uh you know nausicaa is 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 all about how we're destroying the earth yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know and uh not to uh, not, not to say that it's in any way like a direct correlation to other things that are going on right now, but it's like it also kind of frustrates me that that movie came out in like 89 or something like that. Uh, and it's like, yeah, and you see how little has changed. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it again and I severity wise, I'm not even I don't even want to relate the two, but it's like that seems to be a common theme this weekend for me, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I was like watching that movie yeah. and seeing what was going on of like how how little has changed. Mm. Uh, and I, I feel like that's why. You know, we spent the first half of the podcast talking about that because I think I think we all really want to see change. Yes, I think we're all very frustrated. Yeah. Um, How can we enact change, Carrie? What's a good way to do that? Well, uh, you know, I I'm going to be the first to say that I don't know every single place that's going to be good to donate. I know that, uh, that there are a lot of local, uh, you know, towns and cities that are, you know, opening up donations uh the NAACP is great um uh the RT Twitter uh tweeted out a link to a, a you know a handful of places that are great to donate um uh, Ooh, trying, have, was there uh, I have it up Carrie Issa, you mentioned you. one yeah yeah so the, Please. the one Carrie mentioned um the NAACP uh that's always a really great a program to donate to mm -hmm. um, something that would be, I think, really beneficial and uh, really productive is the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Mm. Yes. Um, don't know. Uh, just Google it for the website. I unfortunately don't have it up right now. <laughs> um, but that one is, helps um, uh, fight for civil rights law organization, um, racial justice through litigation, advocacy and public education. Um, Color of Change is another organization um national act uh there's this national action net uh and there's a lot of different stuff happening all around black lives matter is also a very big thing mm -hmm. as well um and uh lots of i think uh at the beginning of the weekend uh the minnesota freedom fund was getting a lot of attention and they're directing everyone else to try and spread their um large donations to other uh other groups on top mm -hmm. of that um so there's a lot of medic street medic groups there's a lot of uh, other protesters as well that are still trying to um i feed the protesters on top of making sure there's harm reduction um so uh continue to look through very those sites because more than likely they'll have affiliates and they'll also link and direct you mm -hmm. to other place other groups that um We'll say we, the, our brothers and sisters, need help here, and that is where you can direct your funds and your attention to as well. And and really, you know, five dollars helps, fifty dollars helps, five hundred dollars help, a retweet helps. You know, um, if if you can't, if you if you're not in a position to do that, I don't think you should feel ashamed of that. But you, you know, there's still things people can do. Um, but uh, you know, I think yeah, we all want to see change, and uh, it's got to come from all of us, though. Yep. Make sure. Uh, you know, you, we as peers, coworkers, friends, we should all hold each other accountable mm -hmm. to do better. Y you, the listeners and the fans, hold us accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, make sure we stick with the fight and keep trying to like fight for change. And uh, we'll try to keep inspiring you guys to do the same. Yeah. Uh, and with that, we have there's another episode of I Have Notes uh less important than all those things is uh if you want to rate and subscribe to us that's cool if you're not already uh but tell your uh, friends about us yeah tell your friends about us but uh that's that's less important right now um 
uh, stay safe. Uh, you know, do things for yourself. I think that's important. Uh, and uh, have a great week, y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.